All right, thanks everybody. <clears throat> so today I'm gonna to talk about the evolving architecture of the web. And when I talk about the web in this presentation, I'm not talking about front-end technologies like HTML or JavaScript or even back-end technologies like Ruby on Rails or, or Docker. Instead, I'm gonna be focusing on the underlying technology and infrastructure and protocols that, the web that web services are built on. Now, the web is only one of many applications that use the hundreds of thousands of networks that make up the internet. And privacy is a high-level goal that many people agree that the web should provide. Ideally, the web browsing patterns of individuals who use the internet uh, should be private. They should not be something that people who operate these networks should be able to read and infer things about. We would also like one high-level goal for browsing the internet is performance. When you browse a website, it should be snappy, it should be responsive. When you send a request, it should come back with very low latency. Now, historically, there's been a tension between these two goals. On one end of the spectrum, anonymity networks like Tor provide very strong privacy guarantees uh, at the cost of very high latency. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have unencrypted and cacheable protocols which can achieve very high latency but have very weak privacy guarantees. So in this talk, I'll explore a confluence of events that have changed the architecture of the web in the way that actually makes it possible to improve both privacy and performance simultaneously. So let's start by talking about the fundamental protocols that make the web possible, DNS and HTTP. Uh, DNS, the da domain name system, is a query-oriented protocol that turns names into numbers. Uh, it has a tiered architecture where users, clients, make requests to a resolver who answer the questions, and if they don't, they talk to an authoritative server to get the answer. Uh, DNS is one of the oldest protocols in wide use on the internet and was not designed with privacy in mind. Uh, it's an unencrypted protocol, but it also has well-defined cache semantics. And this caching dynamic where resolvers can take answers and replay them if someone asks the same question provides some amount of privacy cover. Um, the authoritative server only gets visibility into not the client's entire IP, but just the subnet in which it comes from. And not all requests go all the way through the DNS system. But generally, DNS is not privacy friendly. Now, HTTP, this is, is the protocol that takes web addresses and returns content, HTML and, and whatnot. Um, this, is, this is a two-party protocol between a web client and a web server. Similar to DNS, it's unencrypted. And in un, the unencrypted cases, uh, internet service providers can help speed up, help provide uh, latency improvements by caching this content. So let's try to visualize what the early web with these two protocols look like. Um, because residential networks did not allow people to host websites from your own residential location, people tended to host their content on a small subset of networks that would allow it. This results, resulted in a somewhat less centralized, <clears throat> a somewhat less decentralized topology than we're taught to believe in school. Um, so websites hosted by a single machine are on a single location on Earth. So requests to these hosts, these websites, have to travel around the world, which can result in poor performance for people who are not actually close to these, these web services. And because the traffic is unencrypted, it also exposes your traffic to multiple geographies. Now, two of the major evolutions of the web since the very early days uh, are shared hosting and encryption. Um, <clears throat> the internet has evolved somewhat from a somewhat centralized but administratively diverse environment to uh, a situation in which you have many websites hosted and managed by the same providers. And this results in a little bit more centralization. Uh, with encryption, HTTPS is the protocol that provides this. And this takes the content of your information and makes sure that nobody can, can read it when it transits the internet, which is a huge upgrade for privacy. But it doesn't close all the privacy loopholes. It's also somewhat harmful for latency, because to establish an HTTPS connection, you need several round trips to uh, establish the shared cryptographic keys. Um, <clears throat> it also breaks the ability for ISPs and intermediaries to do caching, which is also bad for latency. So 
Furthermore, with shared hosting, to support the growing number of domains uh, on the internet and the limited set of IPs that are available, hosting providers started using the same IP for multiple different websites. Now, in a perfect world, you could imagine that adding encryption would allow you to provide cover for the many websites who are using the same IP. Uh, connections to this IP would be indistinguishable, which would help in terms of privacy. But in reality, this doesn't work. There's, uh, servers need to understand and know which website you're connecting to in order to present the correct certificate. Um, and this is part of what HTTPS works. This is an extension called SNI. Um, it sends the host name in the clear. So recently, there have been some more changes to the way that web services work. Uh, these changes include the expansion of HTTPS and the advent of low-cost edge services. Now, an edge services are geographically distributed networks that can act as the server for multiple websites. And these networks often use techniques like IP Anycast, that allows the same IP to be broadcast from many locations around the world to serve the same content. Um, this spreads attacks and decreases the need for DNS to know which IP the client is actually coming from. Uh, and if you look at this topologically, uh, you go from a situation where you have shared hosts, and these are very centralized, to a situation where you have these edge providers in which uh, the content is almost always close to the viewer. So there are fewer long lines, fewer long latency connections, um, and also uh, some sites still have centralization, such as Wiki Wikipedia are served from some central locations, but the percentage of sites, especially the less popular sites that are using these distributed edge services has grown tremendously, and this trend is continuing. So edge networks help you gain back some of the performance, some of this latency that's lost from adding HTTPS, uh, mainly by putting the content closer to the visitors. But from a privacy perspective, DNS is still the same. It still leaks information all over the place. Now one reason upgrading operating system components is hard is the DNS is handled much lower down on your operating system as a client. And uh, one idea to improve DNS privacy is to encrypt this connection from the client to the resolver. Um, and to do so, uh, the there's a proposal called DOE, which is, stands for DNS over HTTPS. So depending on how close you can get your edge resolver that speaks DNS over HTTPS can get to the client, you can actually have relatively low latency. So even with, the, with DOE in, a, in place, uh, this helps encrypt your DNS traffic, but e even with the in place, SNI leaks the host name over TLS, which is still a problem. So stepping back, SNI is one way in which any network that sees your traffic that is in between the client and the server can know which domain you're trying to access. Can this be improved? Is SNI a deal breaker? Well, you can't keep everything hidden online, but with edge services that span many domains, you may be able to hide in a crowd. Now, th this is a diagram of how you access a site over HTTP 1.1, the most common version of HTTP before the last couple years. Uh, say you have a site called burrito.com and another site called beans.com, and you wanna hide the, f hide the fact that you're going to beans.com. And the, both these services are using the same edge service, both these websites. So both DNS and HTTPS put the host name in the clear on the network through HTTPS on SNI and through DNS, uh, assuming DOE is not deployed. Um, this also leaks the fact that you're going to both websites. In recent years, HTTP has been upgraded to a new protocol called HTTP2, which allows you to make multiple requests on the same encrypted connection in a multiplexed way. It also technically allows you to send requests to multiple domains over the same encrypted connection. And this is actually done automatically by browsers as long as two things are present. First, that the certificate is valid for both domains you're trying to access. And 
Second, that the DNS states that both websites or both domains have the same IP. Uh, this is actually better than HTTP 1.1 for latency and privacy reasons for, for two points. One is which um, <clears throat> you don't have to make a new connection to beans.com. And the second is that SNI for beans.com is not leaked on the network. But still, DNS is sent for both of these requests. And it's operationally problematic to use the same IP for many, many, many different sites. You often want to split these up so that you can do uh, denial of service protection and, and all sorts of other things administratively. Um, furthermore, this requires a shared certificate, which in this case, it's difficult to scale this up to more than dozens of different websites. So at most, you can hide or you can hide your traffic among a small list. That limits the size of the crowd you can sit in. So a new, pro new proposal for HTTP2 that is just nascent is called the origin frame. Now, what the origin frame is, is it lets the server give the client a list of domains that are available without a DNS lookup. And you can think of this like moving the DNS request from DNS into the HTTP2 tunnel. Um, this results in one less DNS lookup, which is good for latency, but it also helps protect the fact that the server is exposing that it can serve these multiple domains. Now, this is better. This blocks the DNS leak for beans.com, and uh, it it's doesn't allow you to, <clears throat> uh, it doesn't force you to use the same IP for both all your websites that are hosted on the same place, but it does still require you to have this certificate that covers most, most places. It would be better to use multiple certificates. So the question is, if you can move the DNS into the tunnel, uh, into the encrypted tunnel, why not also the certificate? And this is where the second proposal comes into play. Uh, this is called the certificate frame. It's a new HTTP2 extension that lets the server not only advertise through origin that it supports beans.com, but it also allows the server to prove ownership of the beans.com certificate inside this encrypted tunnel, invisible to the network. So with origin and certificate together, a server can cover the fact that beans traffic is being served completely. Essentially, you can hide the beans inside the burrito. Uh, <laughs> this resolves this for this for the third and final privacy concern. And um, some domain fronting techniques that you may have heard of work in a similar way. Um, rather than using an explicit opt-in from the server, such as uh, the certificate frame and the origin frame, protocols like uh, Meek uh, uh, have the client pretend to be one of the sec one of the other servers that it, one of the other websites that's behind the same edge service and request that content. Um, this, these techniques take advantage of the fact that some servers don't actually check host names against certificates. So what origin and certificate provide is a standards compliant alternative to systems like Meek that have less risk of collateral damage to websites. So where are we now with these proposals? Well, are they real? Doe, for example, is actually available right now on Google DNS. They have an experimental endpoint. Um, Origin is implemented in Firefox. It's in the current stable version of Firefox. And certificate is not far behind. It's currently being standardized by the IATF. So with these technologies in place, uh, it turns out we can get pri privacy and performance benefits in exchange for administrative centralization. So if you remove the DNS from the equation, um, this, is, this is somewhat controversial because DNS is used for many different things, not just for routing. It's uh, used for content restriction, it's used for censorship, and it's used for quite a lot of different, different <clears throat> options uh, in, in the world, and in the security world in particular. So, um, we need to ask ourselves with this technology, origin and certificate, which provide privacy guarantees that did not exist before in the web, um, does this have some negative consequences? Does this incentivize 
further consolidation behind a small set of edge services. Is that good or bad? Does this increase performance and privacy, which is generally considered a good thing? Does this outweigh the legitimate need for external visibility, whether in the enterprise or in schools? Um, so there's even more questions. Is is this technology in existence, and if it becomes widespread, will this help or potentially be counterproductive for censorship resilience in the long term? Now, I don't know the answers to these questions, but as a community, I think we need to think about them and come up with some understanding of what the future will be for strong privacy and strong latency and, and this sort of extra features in HTTP2. Uh, so with that, I thank you for the attention and let's open up the mics for questions.